An argument can be made that uh, challenges facing South African youth have caused voter apathy amongst this demographic. Little to no employment opportunities, a lack of access to skills development are among contributing factors to this apathy, one would suggest. Now, despite these challenges, the UNDP, in their partnership with the IEC, want to encourage the youth to cast their votes in their local government elections to bring about the change that they want to see. Now, the question is, what is in it for the youth in these upcoming local elections? What will they stand to benefit if they go and vote in large numbers? Well, joining us now to talk about uh, efforts to get young people to vote on the 1st of November, uh, the elections, is Mr. Tamsanga Masingi, who's uh, uh, an organization called Activate Change Drivers. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Um, thank you very much for having me today, Peter. Um, I appreciate the platform. Greetings to your listeners as well. Right. Now, you know, we talk about voter apathy, but I want us to start actually by defining where you think our youth are. Is it voter apathy or is it disillusionment? Because for me, they're two very different things. One suggests that they don't care and another is that they've given up hope. Um, that's a very good question, and we need to make a proper analysis of what is currently happening within our country right now. Right? And I think when we look at the low youth voter turnout when it comes to election season, we have to be honest with the reality that um, the young people have lost faith in institutions. They have lost faith in politicians. Um, they also There is also a lower voter lower civic education that is taking place within the country, right? So I don't think it's voter apathy. I think the real issue here is, you know, the youth being dis disillusioned, as well as, you know, the reality that our leaders, political leaders, as well as public officials or public servants are not pulling up their socks and are not coming to the, to the fort. So what do you think needs to change in our political systems or the way we do politics to ensure that young people um, are not disillusioned and feel that the, that the vote can make a difference? We need to see effective change. We need to see change from politicians. We need to see change from public servants. How often is it that when we think corruption, we just think of the politicians, but there's also public servants who are also corrupt and looting. If I need to renew my you know, license or if I need to get a license, I need to... Um, lubricate the process in order for me to get what I need to get, right? That's government failure, that's government corruption, and it's not just politicians, it's also officials. So government, in essence, needs an entire facelift to ensure that people can have faith in these various institutions that are meant to serve us. Um, they need to serve the community as they used to, um, or the, as they ought to, right? And they need to engage community members on a regular basis, not just when it's election season. It's an entire electoral cycle, and we only see... Uh, politicians engaging the constituencies when it comes to election time. That needs to change. We also need to look into how we do uh, civic education and educating, especially young people, about the importance of local government and how it affects them on their daily lives. You know, it's, more, it's one of the most critical institutions or one of the most critical spheres of government because we interact with it on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, we need to understand actually what it means, what local government means. So those are some of the things that we need to do, you know. Um, we need to ensure that government has an entire facelift. Um, we also need to ensure that public servants are also, you know, held accountable for the poor job that they might be doing or not showing up for the job that they're supposed to do. We also need to educate young people about um, the various processes that are linked to them. You've talked about uh, voter education a couple of times in that answer. So are we saying that it could be partly that young people don't quite understand politics, don't quite understand what the uh, voting might do and how it can contribute to changing their lives? Um, I wouldn't say entirely they don't understand um, voting as a whole, but we need to also ensure that people understand um, the reason that they're voting. Mm. 
what are they voting for? When we talk about local government elections, sometimes it gets clouded by national issues. And this also might be because certain political parties are using national issues to campaign for um, these local government elections. If people understand what impact local government elections have on them, they can make an informed decision. They can start engaging um, on the different ward candidates that are coming in you know, or are standing up for elections, right? They can start engaging them to find out what is it that they want to do or what, it, what it is that they plan to do for their respective communities. There's, there'd be more engagement with, um, gov- with you know, citizens as well as with government officials. So I think we need to ensure that people understand the different elections and the role that these elections play and what it actually means when I, you know, withhold my vote and do not vote. You know, yes, some say that not voting is a statement in its own, However, um, we need to, you know, participate in, in various democratic processes and ensure that the people we'd like to see um, represent us can actually represent us either at council level, especially for these local government elections, or in 2024 for national government at, at the National Assembly. It's more about getting the voices that represent what we stand for to actually stand up for us. Sometimes the connection is a little bit easier when we talk about uh, national elections, but how do you tell a young person who's been unemployed since he left school uh, that there's a connection between voting in a local government election and his employment uh, uh, prospects? Okay. Um, Access to opportunities. You know, with COVID, we've seen that a lot of things have gone digital. If we don't have the correct infrastructure or we don't have access to uh, the right infrastructure, it becomes a bigger, even bigger challenge for us to participate in the economy. So when we have a functional municipality that builds the relevant infrastructure that enable us to participate or create a, a, an effective economy or local economy, it is easier for me as a citizen you know, to live a, lead a better life. So we need to start um, looking at it from this way. If my local government works and it's effective and it's delivering on services, it reduces the barriers uh, between me and gaining employment opportunities. If the grant and aids that municipalities are providing to develop an organization is used correctly, I'm in a better position to take on um, opportunities that are, they, that are meant for me and can you know put me in a better place in society. So. The, the better the government works or the better local government works, the better it is for me to access opportunities if there's infrastructure there. How do we make sure that they feel a part of the process? Because I was speaking to a young activist the other day and he was essentially saying, get out of our way. Um, you're not representing us. And they don't see themselves in the people that are running for office. Uh, they're much older, a uh, different generation, and so they don't feel part of the process, partly because they don't see themselves and partly because they feel like their voice isn't being heard. That has largely to do with ineffective public participation, right? Um, what happens a lot is that our elected representatives aren't engaging young people more specifically throughout the entire electoral cycle. We go for elections, we vote, and we never hear again from our ward councillors. Some, you know, build higher walls, some move out of town. So for us to actually ensure that there's better engagement, we need to see um, ward councillors actually engaging with community members effectively. We need to ensure that we let people know what processes that they can follow to engage with their local municipalities. How do I hold my municipality accountable? Parties themselves also need to be deliberate about, you know, youth representation within their systems. Saying that, you know, 25% of our candidates are going to be young people in a society or in a, yeah, in a country where majority of the population is below the age of 30 is not enough. We need, you know, more deliberative action, more deliberative implementation of policies that ensures there's visible youth participation in key decision-making processes. If we ensure that young people are part of part and parcel of things like IDP meetings, uh, budget meetings, which they're supposed to be, and we let them know about these meetings, we can see, we can create a better relationship between um, elected elected representatives as well as their constituents or young people as a whole. So we need better public participation and we need our elected representatives to ensure that people participate in various processes, make it our way, make it known, and speak the language of young people, right? Um, Also find out how can you access young people? It shouldn't also be that young people are always chasing after these people.
what are the what are these representatives doing in order to ensure that you know they meet young people where they at meet me where i am and i'll be able to do what needs to be done Tamsang, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very, very much indeed. With just 16 days to go, we wish you the best in the work that you still have to do uh, to uh, encourage, motivate and get our young people uh, to get to the polls. Thanks so much indeed for joining us.